If you work with data in any way, you're going to quickly run into a need to move it around. This is done with a process called ETL, or Extract, Transform, and Load. It's the fundamental process to gather, prepare, and store data for analysis, reporting, or any other purpose you come up with. It could be as simple as copy-pasting out of one Excel spreadsheet, moving it into another, and cleaning up the columns a bit. But more commonly, it's a fully engineered and automated process. Moving data between numerous data stores, applying a bunch of data cleanup and business rules, with automated testing and validation. A well-designed ETL process ensures that data quality issues are addressed, irrelevant information is removed, and data relationships are maintained. During the extraction phase, data is collected from various sources, which can include databases, files, APIs, web services, spreadsheets, and much more. These sources might be spread across different systems, applications, and platforms. The goal is to retrieve the data and bring it into a centralized storage or processing environment. Extraction can involve querying databases, scraping websites, or just copying files. The transformation phase involves making data suitable for analysis and storage. Data from different sources might have varying formats, structures, and quality, and it needs to be standardized across all the sources. Transformation processes could include data cleansing, such as removing duplicates, correcting errors, data enrichment, adding additional relevant information, data aggregation, grouping data for summaries, and data formatting, changing data types or units. Business rules and logic are applied during this phase to ensure consistency and accuracy. Once the data has been extracted and transformed, it's loaded into a target data repository, often in a data warehouse, data lake, or another database. Loading involves organizing the transformed data in a structured manner that facilitates querying and analysis. Depending on the architecture, loading can be performed in various ways, such as a full load, replacing all the data, an incremental load, updating only the changed or new data, or a hybrid between those approaches. This is almost always done as a batch process, a method of handling and processing data in chunks or groups at a time, rather than processing each piece of data individually and in real time. This approach is particularly useful when dealing with large volumes of data. We'll get into real-time streaming processes another time, but generally batch is easier and cheaper. It also allows for QA and validation across the full data set being loaded. Imagine you have a big pile of papers to organize. Instead of looking at each paper one by one, a batch process would involve picking up a stack of papers and sorting through them together. You might group similar papers, discard relevant ones, or make notes on the entire stack. This way, you're processing multiple papers at once, saving time and effort. As data engineering practices have evolved, ETL has been complemented by ELT, Extract, Load, Transform, where data is first loaded into the target storage in a raw format that is identical to the source data and then transformed as needed. Historically, ETL tools have their own compute engine for transforming data. ELT takes advantage of the processing capabilities of modern data warehouses and big data platforms, which have near unlimited scalable compute capabilities that can handle transformations on large data sets more efficiently. The big advantages that ELT have are the speed of copy commands can be completed, the fact that raw data is maintained, so if a business rule changes or there's a new approach to analysis, you can go back to the raw data and retransform it. ETL or ELT both tend to be accomplished in two ways, via tools or code, or a mix of both. Tools often have native connectors, which will directly link data from common sources. Think of Salesforce or Workday to common destinations, such as SQL Server, Snowflake, or S3. The good tools have many, many connectors to make things as easy as possible, as well as the ability to create custom connectors if the native option doesn't exist. Some tools are more code-based, where you work through a command line interface, and some tools are more UI-based, where you can drag, drop, and connect the different connections. Tools can be on-premise or cloud-based, and some of the many, many examples are Talent, Informatica, SSIS, Ascend, Fivetran, Matillion. There's a lot more. Alternatively, many people just use code to create ETL pipelines, most commonly using Python and Spark. And then a variety of libraries can simplify the code, such as Pandas, Petal, and SQL Alchemy. 
This can be as simple as reading from a CSV and writing to another CSV, or it could be many steps using data frames to do calculations and merging of numerous files together. No matter what your role working with data, it's important to know how ETL and ELT function. It will always come up. And remember, ETL doesn't just move data. It refines it into a strategic asset.